morning, everybody. This is Haley with the Photo Trend. And given this crazy time we're in, I figured it would be a great opportunity for me to take the time and actually kind of introduce myself uh, to the listeners who don't know me personally and go over my story and the photo trends that I saw happening and how I honestly think I've made a lot of really good decisions in regards to where businesses were going or where even the education was going. Um, and so uh, we do have interviews coming up. We're working on getting them rescheduled. A lot of people are kind of throwing a curveball. And I think just this week we're starting to see a lot of us spin back around and, you know, uh, not kind of mope around. Because if any of you guys are like me, I I've been mad. I've been upset with everything that's going on. And so kind of overnight I'm unemployed. It's, it's a crazy feeling. And, you know, thoughts are with everybody. And, um yeah, so we'll we'll go over my story and the trends that I saw happening and the the things that I've done to make my business where it is today. Um, this story starts when I was in high school. Uh, when I was in high school, they had a really good IT program there. Uh, and my freshman year, I actually went during the summer and I took tests to test out of like the intro to IT classes. I mean, very early on in my life, I was very into computers. I could take them apart, put them back together. Um, I could do some voodoo for not having any technical training, um, or at least I thought it was pretty cool. Um, huge video game nerd, so I knew a lot about that. Uh, and uh, so I actually went during the summer, tested out of like the intro class, which was, you know, Microsoft Word, Excel, that type of stuff. And then uh, the I signed up for digital media. And so the first year, my first class ever of high school, I was in this digital media group and uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I loved every bit of that class, but what I really loved about this class was my teacher. Um, my teacher was Miss Wiggins and she was my favorite teacher that I've ever had, like ever had. And she had this, just this bubble about her that, that made you want to learn. Um, and so she taught digital media and sound. And so very early on, I learned how to uh, do a lot of uh, really cool things with photos, photo manipulation. And, you know, we, we like I said, we had some uh, digital media uh, and sound. So we did video work. Uh, I was in Premiere Pro. I was in After Effects, you know, Photoshop. It gave me my foundation in Photoshop. And we had different projects where we would have to, you know, take photos that um, showed different different styles or we had to take the photos and then manipulate the photos. So very early on in my high school career, I was learning a lot of techniques that would actually be used later. One of the decisions I made while in high school was I actually did this dual enrollment in college and I was able to take college level classes during the summer. And the, the neat thing about that was it allowed me to take more IT classes. So by the time I graduated, um, not only did I have my associate's degree from college from taking some of my classes there, but all of my IT classes were worth college credit. And I was not the best student when it came to, you know, chemistry and math and stuff like that. But having all those IT classes that were weighted and it, it just, it excelled me and it taught me so much. And I knew early on I might want to do something kind of along the lines of, of those IT classes. And so... Once I graduated, uh, I kind of fiddled around for a year. You know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I went to Auburn my freshman year, um, or Eagle, for you guys that are out there. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, I, I loved Auburn. I loved the games. I hated the classes. From taking classes uh, here, where there's actually a really nice uh, state college in my town, and from taking classes there and then going to Auburn, it was a huge difference, and, and I wasn't a fan of it. I, I much rather the small classes. Uh, I loved being able just to, to, you know, see my teacher and schedule that time. And, and so after my freshman year, because I had in-state tuition, I came back to Florida and I was like, I'm just going to stay here. It just made so much more sense to stay here and finish my education. And then not knowing what I wanted to do, uh, you know, I kind of was just taking the basics at that point. And then I followed my now husband up to Ohio uh, when he was moving up there as he got out of the military. And up there, you know, I thought I might want to be a teacher, so I started taking classes again. But one of the big pivot points was uh, I, I wanted a nice camera. And I remember there being this waterfall in town that 
and it wasn't even a waterfall. I shouldn't even call that. It was like a little bitty uh, dam with like, uh, I mean, it was just like a water dam with a little bit of water coming down, but it was so pretty when it snowed, like so pretty. And I knew I wanted to take good photos of it. You know what I mean? And, and I, I, I took some with my cell phone and then I, I wanted good photos, just good photos. So what I did was I actually, um, for the good photos, I said I wanted a nice camera. So we ended up buying me a nice camera and I remember when it came, I was so excited that I had this nice camera and I don't think I ever took photos of that waterfall, uh, which is funny because I remember that being one of the main reasons why I wanted it. Uh, but I had a lot of fun and someone randomly asked me to do, you know, her maternity photos and I just took a few of them and I mean, looking back there, they're not the best, uh, but I don't think anyone's first, you couldn't even call it a session, photos are the best. And then... And from there, uh, you know, I started taking a few action photos of my brother-in-law and, it, you know, I could tell that I had a passion for this thing. And so once we moved back to Florida, it, it was kind of like everything lined up the correct way. And so a lady was retiring that did sports photography. So I went and mentored her, um, and learned her process. I learned how, how she did things. I learned how she she went through and uh, had these order envelopes and how she typed in credit cards and how she dropped off the photo packets and and I learned every bit of that and I, I soaked it all up because I loved it you know I was I was blown away and I, I remember coming home telling my husband how cool it was what she taught me that you know oh you gotta you gotta drop these packets off a week beforehand you gotta pick them up and then you gotta know the order of the kids and it made so much sense to me at the time that this is how this was being done um, and so for like two weeks, I did kind of her grunt work and, you know, I was the one keying in the credit cards, getting the photos ready, ordering them. Uh, I had no idea about volume labs. I had no idea that you could order things prepackaged. I had no idea that there would be better ways that kind of came along later. And so a few years go by and I kind of create a name for myself in regards to having different memory mates, different templates. And I did a really good job of that. And, you know, I had the school logo and the school colors on them. They were completely custom and parents loved me for it. So I was getting jobs quickly by doing that. And then I went to a photo conference, uh, which was sync and here in Destin actually. And, uh, they have sync sports, which is an amazing, uh, conference up in Pennsylvania. And I, while I was there, I got a phone call and I don't even remember who called me and told me that one of the biggest leagues in our town, the photographer was retiring and they needed a photo bid. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I had just seen uh, Jeff Gump present and I had seen Melanie Anderson present and I had this fire in me that, you know, conferences and speakers have a really good way of doing, you know, they, they build this fire in you. And I remember I walked up to Melanie and I walked up to Jeff and I asked both of them separately, you know, how would you do this? And they both introduced me to labs and I talked to labs and I picked the lab that I thought was going to be able to do the job the best way and, you know, easy for me. And from there we put in a bid. I had no idea what I was doing, uh, to be completely honest. Uh, I pulled my best friend Kayla in. And, you know, Kayla is definitely one of my ride or dies. Uh, if I have some crazy idea, she, you know, like, hey, we've never photographed 800 kids before, but we've got these scanners and we've got these order forms and we're going to do this. And it, it's funny to know where we were the first year and where we were this last year because we just photographed that same league uh, right before uh, two weeks ago. We did it on the, the 7th. And it's funny to know where we were that first year to where we are today. Um, but with that, I mean, we were in the woods, we had these two tables and we had the scanners and we photographed. And I, I mean, I remember going and dropping the order for, forms off at the uniforms and stuffing them in the uniforms. And I was there for like two hours doing it. I was so proud of myself, you know, for, for getting this all set up. And then we just took, we did the, the labels and the scanners the way we were supposed to. So you know, the parents would put money in the envelope and the kid would bring the envelope to you and you would scan the envelope for their label and then you would scan the packages. 
And then we would just, we wouldn't deal with the money then. You know, we just put them in a bucket and we would photograph. And I remember the next day, Kayla came over to help me process. Because, again, no idea of what we're really doing. We're just kind of figuring it out as we go. Um, and uh, when she came over to help me process, we spent hours just opening these envelopes. And some of them had more money than we needed. Some of them had less money. A lot of them were checks. I remember like five of the checks bounced and we spent probably a day just ripping open envelopes. And I remember we were sitting like in this pile of trash and I was thinking how crazy this was that this is what we did. This is how we get our money. Well, then we import the images and we import the, the scan data. And of course it was not right. And luckily we knew a lot of the kids or we, we could figure out, you know, the loopholes, but you know, sometimes the scanner didn't scan a kid or sometimes it didn't scan a package. So you could not rely on that system at all. And it was a problem. I saw right off the bat that this was a problem. This took way too much time. This took way too much paper. And knowing what I know about technology, I could not believe that this was how this was being done. Um, so basically I took that lab system, which was you print off a label for each kid and you scan a label for each kid and you do all these things, uh, you know, with those labels. Well, there's issues with the labels, like, such as if the dirt gets on them, it scratches the label and they don't scan. Or what if you lose a label and now you got having more labels? Well, those labels, I don't know if y'all know this, but they're expensive. And so the first thing I did was I started printing just a team sheet per team. And we had the order forms, uh, but we basically... I bought a square register off off Craigslist <laughs> and it was only like $200 but it made us look more official it made us feel more official and instead of them writing the credit card numbers down if they wanted to pay with a credit card they had to pay at the register that day if they wanted to pay with cash they had to pay with cash at the register that day and we did all the transactions through the square register um, and then that way we also had a log of it and we could give them a receipt. We had a printer. I felt super cool, super legit with that register. And uh, so that was the first change we did was we started taking the money up front. And the second change, like I said, with the team sheets, instead of printing off a label for every kid, we printed off a team sheet, which had every kid's name on it, uh, on that team sheet. And then when the coach would come check in for their photo time, we would hand them their team sheet. And on the top of the team sheet, we would write like, uh, one dash two and what that meant was they went to individual individual bay one and they were the second team in that bay so that sheet would then go to the photographer well the photographer assistant would write on that team sheet we did the same order of kids every time we go down column one down column two down column three and they would write you know one through 500 they would keep a running total for the day on all the team sheets and the team sheets were a backup because, like I said, the scanners weren't reliable. So let's say you're going through images and you have a little girl and the name's Timmy. Well, you could tell by what where you were in your day sheet what number that kid was. And you could figure out, okay, well, if, if the one right before him is 152, this is 153. And then you would find 153 on your team sheet. And then that was that kid. And it was an easier way to match them up. So the first thing we did was eliminate 800 labels and we went to like 60 pieces of paper. Um, and it made it much, much easier doing it that way. I mean, we already had a huge decrease in issues. Uh, the other thing that we did uh, after that was, again, we were realizing that parents wanted to see images. You know, you're, you're living in this, this world of technology and people want to, they want to see images. I saw very quickly that like my friends were becoming the clients and we live in a, a world of Amazon Prime and free shipping and we, we like now, we like fast, we're used to it, we're used to computers. And so basically what we did was I'm like, okay, we got to be able to start proofing these things. So we went through and we started proofing uh, images through the lab system and basically they could, the first year I did it, um, I put all the late orders on there. So like if people wanted to order late, they just had to go online and yes, it was a little bit more expensive and it worked great for that. And then the second year I went and said, okay, um, if you want to, we did the same register up front. We did the same order forms, but on the order forms, I said, uh, proof your images online for $5 more. 
So the first year we did online ordering, they could either, it, it, they got basically, I called it prepay savings. And if they prepaid online or if they prepaid uh, the day of, which was considered the prepay, then they would get a discount or they could proof the images later online for $5 more. So basically it was this really cool advance pay system and they thought they were getting a deal, which they really were because you know the $5 was basically the shipping. Um, and so with that, they would, they would you know do the advance pay. And so it worked great until I realized that we had more parents waiting to proof the images online as we did these leaks like they they were they were waiting and you know we had parents that would come up and say hey I can proof it online you know it's just gonna be five dollars more and I'm like yeah well it was worth the five dollars if they liked the images that they got to see them and so very quickly we saw parents not ordering day of because they wanted to see the images and this is due to bad photographers and people that start doing photography and honestly don't know what they're doing and um, you know, we have us as photographers, we have a reputation of following, you know, school photography and school photographers are always not the best, you know, they're from out of town. They don't know the kids. They don't take the time with the kids and they're, you know, you get these crazy franchises where they just send people with a camera and they're like, yeah, you know, take good photos. And, you know, they don't really care. And I, I mean that honestly where we're a little different. We really care because we're in the community, you know, we'll, we'll come take great photos. And so very quickly we saw a lot of parents opting to just pay later and pay a little bit more for online sales. So we were still having this order form issue of, we had a lot of order forms and I didn't want that. So I got with my friend Brian at, at 3P LTD, uh, 3P LTD Unlimited, sorry Brian. And uh, I, I said, I want, I don't want the traditional order form I just want the bottom part of it and so what we ended up doing was we took the bottom part of the order form we put it kind of on like these card stocks and parents would come up and they would look and they would order on that card stock and so the first year we did that they would come up and order and we would just key in the order through my lab system as if we were doing like a school shoot because they had it set up where you could do it for schools but not for for leagues so we just kind of mimicked it and then they would fill out the card and we'd put the order in right then and there, which was great. It was awesome. Uh, we had a lot less issues later. I mean, it was, it was a really good system. And so uh, that eliminated a lot of paper and saved a lot of money. I mean, right off the bat, we were saving hundreds of dollars by not ordering a TUS and order forms. And then the next year I took it one step further and we did what I call my Chick-fil-A system. And my Chick-fil-A system is... Basically, there was a banner behind the, the check-in desk and the parents still filled out. Uh, well, actually, they didn't fill out that year. They just came up and said, hey, can I get a number one with, you know, a memory mate? And <laughs> we went from there. And immediately, we saw a huge increase in orders just by not having an order form. Um, and so that Chick-fil-A system worked great but it still wasn't perfect. And so I started trying to add in new things into my business, such as text marketing and um, online ordering. And I was doing, using probably six different resources to do this. And so as I was doing all these resources to try and create this perfect photo day, I was being told by a lot of my peers, you know, you're crazy, it's not gonna work. Uh, people, you know, they, they're not gonna wanna give up order forms and I think that's ridiculous because uh, the only time you fill an order form is like when you're at the doctor's office or, I, I mean, it's very rare that you're filling out an order form. I mean, even when it comes to like buying a house, like this, when we bought our house uh, last year, it, it was all done, you know, electronically. Like the only thing that we had to do was go in the day of and sign the papers. That was the only thing that was done on paper. Um, everything else was completely electronically. And so that's when um, at one of the SYNC conferences, and I can't stress enough, continuing education, you guys, you gotta do it. Uh, at one of the SYNC conferences, I was at dinner with a bunch of friends and um, I met uh, Lisa Malice at, that night. And uh, I knew at the time she was working on this Project X. I had no idea what it was. I just knew it was Project X. And I knew later we were all hanging out, having fun, celebrating the fact that Project X took off 
and it was going to be this amazing, amazing thing. And I remember her telling me, you're going to be a part of this. You just don't know it yet. And it stemmed from the fact that I had a bunch of my peers telling me that a way I was going to run my photo day wasn't going to work. And what I didn't know at the time was Lisa's Project X was actually going to be the software photo day. And got to give them credit because it's what I use. Um, but photo day was going to be all of my, you know, six technology software things that I was using kind of rolled up into one ball. And it had text marketing and it had different things. And very early on in the photo day process, I became on as like, um, I was one of their lead beta testers and I was one of their coaches. And so what we did was we actually had these phone calls and we talked and I would go use photo day just live action and figure out <laughs> if we had any issues with it. Um, we added advance pay where, you know, the traditional way of advance pay is you pick a package based off of photos you've never seen before. And I, I always thought that was like the dumbest idea. And so with photo days advance pay, what we did was we actually, you know, kind of created, uh, they could advance pay for photos. And when they advance pay for photos, it, it's just a credit towards a purchase, a gift card, if you will. And so it, it immensely started seeing rises in our, our sales just from that. And so now we are completely an online company. Uh, I don't even have to really print the rat cards anymore for my league days. Uh, even my school flyers, where we used to deliver them by hand through the photo day system, I'm now emailing them to parents because even the schools see the advantage of giving me the parents' email so I can just directly email them the flyers. It's just something less that they have to deal with. And it, it's been a crazy journey to being, you know, this this young business owner who had no idea what they were doing and, and doing it the old way and then slowly doing it your way within the old way and then completely eliminating the old way and doing it your own way. And the coolest part about my, my photo trend journey is I could see all these changes happening with amongst our parents and amongst our leagues and our orders. And I, I knew that it had to be a better way. And photo day became in and it was, it was a great way to do our league days, to do our big jobs. And it's been a huge part of my company since I switched over to it. Um, but to show you how much faith I had in, in that trend, just, just the changes and people no longer wanting, wanting to not view photos and people wanting to get that instant gratification of an order confirmation email or, you know, be able to pick and choose what they would like. Um, it was huge and I could tell very quickly that, that times were changing and parents wanted that. And so that has been one of the key parts to my success is, is realizing that change in your parents and understanding that it's coming and then dealing with it and, and going with it. You know what I mean? Like it, it took, it took some guts to just trust the system that had never been tested before. Um, and the cool thing about it is, you know, my, my gut was right on everything I've ever done in regards to changing the way that I do photos or changing the way that my order system works. Every time I've changed something, it has definitely been for the better. And it has been one of those things where it has allowed me to grow and it has also allowed me, um, you know, to develop my own little tricks and marketing and, and different things like that. And so... I highly recommend you trust your gut and I highly recommend that, you know, the photo trends of the order industry are definitely going in different ways. And, you know, for our leagues and schools, it has been a big transition to, you know, going from the paper to the online ordering, but we are doing bigger and better than ever and we're becoming known for it. And so your trend is definitely you know, it's not paper anymore. We call ourselves a green company. Uh, we, we don't print other than rack cards usually the day of, or we print like flyers that go to the team mom meeting if they have one. I mean, even our schools, like I said, we, they're now doing emails, which is great because I don't, and one thing on the emails, uh, just thrown out there, if you guys get access to their emails, to me personally, I don't, think, oh yes, I got these emails. I got to go spam them. I want parents to receive my emails. I want parents to, to not put me in a spam folder. I want parents to understand that I am 
only going to send them photo day information related to their kid. And so I have all these emails and the only time I use emails is when the school gives them to me and I email the parent. You know, here's your photo day flyer and it goes directly to them. They don't spam filter me. I don't send them specials. I think email's dead because uh, um, being of, you know, the millennial generation, um, we basically, you know, we want fast and we want efficient and I do not even look at spam emails. If in, Unless it's an order number or unless it's from someone I know, I don't even look at it. I unsubscribe and I delete it. And I don't want to create that relationship with my parents to where they do that. So I don't spam them. I don't send them specials. I use social media to market my specials. I use my flyers that I email out regarding the information to maybe announce that, that time frame special. So for example, right now it's senior sessions. And so... You know, you might want to consider how you're using, you know, technology to contact your parents. And we don't spam them. We literally say, here's your flyer. And then that's that. And if they don't receive that initial email, they might contact me to get it. But we don't spam. And I highly recommend you don't spam because you'll lose emails quickly if you do spam. Um, you'll lose that, that conversation you've had with uh, your school to get the emails because now all of a sudden you're spamming their parents and they don't want that. Um, but I do recommend, you know, asking for these emails, you know, making sure that you tell people, oh, we're not going to spam your parents and you work with, with your schools, um, because your schools are, are really trying to, you know, make this easier on themselves. So just keep that in mind on how you can do that. And one way is by emailing and not spamming. So the other thing too, that we do is we do the text marketing that's completely done through photo day. I'm in love with text. Uh, you know, even my doctors, I'm like, Hey, will you send me a text confirmation? And, uh, the fun part about that is I remember when my mom first came home and she goes, Oh, you can now text a message to somebody for like 10 cents or whatever it was. I remember looking at her saying, that's stupid. No one's ever going to do that. Well, here we are. Um, that was the trend of the time. And my mom had picked up on it before I did, <laughs> but it, you know, pay attention to your clients, pay attention to how things are going. And, you know, like I said, the biggest trend that I see right now is order forms are dead. I do not think order forms are going to be something that come back around. I think that every parent is going to want an online solution. And I think every studio needs to have an online solution. You need to know how to do it. You need to know how to proof your images. You can do a hybrid like we did for two years, but you need those resources. So the trend for today is order forms are dead. Digitals are coming in. And on our next one, I'll talk to you guys about how we're using uh, digital images in our business and how our parents want those digital images. So I'll catch you guys next time. Oh,